Okay, so let's just begin. Let's just continue up with this follow-up tutorial on John the Ripper. We have obtained root access, and we needed root access in order to have access to Etsy passwd and Etsy shadow, where the passwords are stored. Now we need to go ahead and type in as root. Remember, uh, on shadow. Yes, my typing skills are amazing. Uh, so just type in unshadow slash etsy slash passwd and slash etsy, which one was it? Shadow. Shadow. Excellent. And we need to store this into some sort of file. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. You can actually smash your keyboard if you wish. I'm going to go ahead and name mine uh, pass. Press enter. If you do ls, you'll see that there is a pass there. There is indeed a file named pass. So let's just go ahead and type in cat pass. Press enter. And there you go. I have lots of things here, lots of hashes. Actually, we're maybe not lots of hashes. Sorry about that. But you have root, then colon, and here you have a hash, uh, uh, encryption. Then down below somewhere, if I can just find it, there we go. So it says test again, colon, and then you have an encryption there. Let's just go ahead and clear the screen. Now, John has a lot of options here. Let me just switch to full screen mode. And look, you have you can specify certain rules. You can specify files, so just you do a word list and then uh, read from the word list. You can have a configuration file for the John itself to substitute john.conf, which you can also alter as well. But there are literally tons and tons of rules here, depending on what you are cracking, what sort of what sort of encryption you are cracking. But the most specific rules are the best one, actually the best ones, that's what I want to say. The best ones are when you can actually specify certain rules on your brute force attack. So let's say, I don't know, I want, I want you to try all the words where the first letter is a capital letter and then the second letter is, I don't know, so, then the second letter is lowercase letter or something of a kind because it is likely that the first letter will be capital more likely than not and if you know that the last that the last three num that the last three characters are actually numbers you can also do that as well there are a ton load of options you can all do you can do these things with crunch as i've showed you before but there are it does i just wanted to make a mention of it that it does exist for john the ripper as well However, what people generally tend to use for John the Ripper is dash dash format and then name. Now, name, of course, you will substitute with one of the with one of the encryption types with one of the hashes. So it forces it forces one of these hashes to be decrypted. If you don't know which type of a hash it is, it's not a it's not a big deal at all. Don't worry about it. John will be able to figure it out on its own, but it will issue a warning. Look at how many of them there are. There are a lot of them, and as I said, if you don't know which one it is, no big deal. Also, a very nice thing is that you know those you know those files that you download from torrents, and then I don't know. Sometimes it says that it's a the file is zipped and that there is a password on it. Well, you can use John Dripper to actually crack to actually crack it open. That's very nice as well. But in any in any kind of in any case, we're just going to use John with the most basic of options in order to crack the password hashes for a Linux system, as we are cracking system passwords today. You can also use this crack status emit a status line whenever a password is cracked. If you have a large amount, if you have a very large file of hashes, uh, you can also use this one to tell you when something is cracked. But you generally just want to generally just want to leave it to run to the end. Anyway, let's just go ahead and clear the screen. Use John. So just type in uh, J O H N space. It's called John the Ripper, but the command to execute it is just John. And then type in the file that we have previously made. So pass. Press enter. And for you, it's gonna say I don't know something like uh, password cra passwords cracked or something like that. For me, it says loaded two password hashes with two different salts. 
so yeah there we go it says no password hashes left to crack because I have cracked them previously but it doesn't matter whether you find them here or not what you want to do is be able to see them later on and that's the command that is of importance to you regardless of whether you see them here or not so they'll be probably printed they will be printed out here it will say username password however that is not what you want what you want is John dash dash show Oops, sorry, pass. Uh, excellent. So you type in John, then you type in space once the John is done completely, and then space, dash dash, show, space, and then the name of the file for which you want to, for which you want to crack the hashes. And then it says, look, root colon test something here, uh, test test, one, one. Oh, X, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it says root colon, and this is the password for root. So you see here, the root account colon, the password for root account is test, and you can just disregard the rest. And the, the, uh, the password for our regular user, test colon test. I really should be using something different here, other than just pretty much naming everything test, because it can get a bit confusing. That's one of the things that I would suggest to you that you change. But in any case, this cracking process can take a while, so keep that in mind. John the Ripper is not perfect, and of course, its, perform its, its performance is dependent on your physical, on the physical capabilities of your machine. If it's something rather complex and difficult, uh, it's gonna take it's gonna take a lot longer than this. Although you, there is always that factor of chance that you will be able. Uh, to figure it out in a relatively short amount of time. In any case, it doesn't cost you a lot to simply give it a shot because you always have a chance. And this is the format that you will get for the for the files. Make sure to save the files somewhere so that you can always review them later on with John uh, space dash dash show command. Uh, once I just wanted to reiterate once again, it doesn't. It makes no difference of whatsoever that I wasn't shown passwords here because it says no password hashes left to crack. Uh, loaded two password hashes with two different salts. Doesn't really matter. All of this you will see, except this last line, and then in the la instead of the last line you will see something like this. But again, it doesn't matter to you at all, primarily because that's the terminal output. That's the standard output. You don't want to just have it there in the standard output. You want to have it somewhere where you are always able to access it. And that's why uh, after, after you've cracked them, clear the screen and use John Show and then the name of the file in order to list them here. Because like that, they are, permanent, they are stored for good on your computer where you can review them at any later time. You do not want to be memorizing these passwords. And once again, do use something different other than test. You can see I was confused there for a moment, primarily because I use these things. Anyway, I bid you all farewell. And in the follow-up tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and jump into Windows and see what we can actually do there and how can we extract and crack the passwords in Windows or bypass them completely. Until then, I gonna call I'm gonna call the tutorial here and I hope to see you there as well.